Health, Beauty, Life, the show, was created to recognize and explore trends in celebrity, food, beauty and fashion, health and fitness, travel and lifestyle. Hosted by Patrick Dockery. Hi everybody, here we are today with Dr. Paul Kopsky. He's actually a, almost a foot specialist, is that correct? Or Yes, I am. What do you like to call yourself? I like to consider myself a sports medicine specialist. Okay. So I mostly am coordinating my care with people who are exercising and looking to get more out of their exercise, have less time on the sidelines, being injured, and basically having a, an active patient base, whether they be a, a one or two year old or a hundred and one or a hundred and two year old. That's the way we do it. We gotta take care of everybody, right? Right. Everybody deserves to feel great, to look great, and enjoy life. So how'd you get started? Well, I got started in the specialty of uh, sports uh, in San Diego when I was working with the Ironman triathletes. Scott Tinley and Mark Allen and uh, a lot of the early you know, pioneers of that sport that really were just trying to test the limits of the physical abilities of the body. Trying to exercise eight to ten hours a day, doing that seven days a week. Yeah. And How was that working out for them? Yeah, it, it, it made them need a lot of treatment. And that's what got me to think more about just band-aid care with my patients where a lot of times, you know, the neck, the back, uh, the shoulder, you really kind of focus more on that area of complaint. And sometimes you have to step back from the focal point and try to see how that point is related to other points. Kind of like the way the old song goes, the foot bones connected to the leg bone, to the hip. Absolutely. That's how it all came together for me, and really starting with the feet is where I found that my focus had to originate, especially people taking thousands of steps a day, hundreds of thousands of miles in our lifetime on one set of wheels, one chassis, 206 bones, 600 muscles, 1,200 ligaments. There is a very specific geometry that the body has in it innately and this is what I was able to figure out that when we can make the body symmetrical and have one side working as equally as the other side or not a dominant side then we find that the skeleton can respond better stay in better alignment and perform better so what are the, some of the proactive steps that we could take to prevent those types of injuries fatigues and also structural alignment issues so really, as we said, starting with the feet is probably the most critical thing. And so, you know, when you look at the uh, actual foot, and this is a plastic foot where we're just looking at a little side angle here, the, the foot should have an arch in it. And that arch should actually be something that would be measurable. So we do have numbers. And so when I do this with uh, specific patients, we will get an exact number of an arch that we want to create. But basically, you want to see this pitch. And the heel should pitch up at about a 40 degree angle where the arch will maintain this high position. An indication of a good arch is that the, the big toe will be straight. And that's what we want to continue to see when people continue to age. A lot of times as the foot starts to flatten, as it starts to deform, the big toe will start to move to the outside. So trying to keep this support underneath the foot is where we find that the highest priority is. And that's why the shoe is uh, another part of the puzzle. And so when I uh, give you an example of a shoe that doesn't have that much support, when we take the heel and the toe the opposite way and we twist the shoe, if we see it bending in the middle, then we know that it's not gonna probably have as much support to keep that arch in that better alignment. A shoe that has more beef, so to speak, in the middle part is gonna have a lot more ability to hold the arch up. So it's like there's we, a lot more reinforcement built into the design itself. Right, okay. so you're gonna you know, have a shoe that's gonna cost more, it's definitely gonna have more of this architecture. It'll have this polyurethane, this gray material, only on the inside, not even on the outside of the, uh, the foot, but it is on the inside so we keep the foot from rolling in, what we call pronation. But taking the shoe and twisting the heel and the toe the opposite way, you don't wanna see that bending in the middle. You always wanna see a flexible toe box, 
but you want to keep the shoe from bending in the middle. So we've talked about the athletic shoes and the general athletic shoes. Now I'd like to talk about a little more about fashion shoes or casual shoes that people would wear. What can we do to help them in that instance? Okay, so basically you have to match the orthotic to the shoe. And so a traditional kind of athletic running orthotic will have a lot more architecture in the heel area and usually will have a full length top cover with special padding to absorb all that extra shock. But when we get into the non-running environment where you want to go out and have a lot of fun. A looking good environment. Yes. Okay. And uh, one that'll basically even make you a little taller. We, we take an orthotic and we pretty much just chop it up. So the most important thing is to hold the arch up and that's why the arch component is the primary part of this. So we, we have the arch supported and then we minimize what's in the heel. We actually make a little uh, cup here where it can bend a little bit so then it can fit into a smaller type of shoe. What are your top three things you talk about as far as shoes, structure, orthotics that you need to look for? Okay, as far as the shoes are concerned, I would absolutely say that you want to look to the strength issue as being the priority. So when you go into a running specialty store or a, a store that is going to be selling running shoes, you, you want to look for motion control and stability. Those are the two descriptions we like to use for shoes that offer the best support. And so what we want to do is secure all of the lacing uh, spots and at the very top eyelet, you want to go back in to the same side. So you create this little loop, and you do the same thing on the other side, where you've created the loop there. These two loops go into each other in this way, and then the shoe is pulled securely in this way. Wow. And this really secures the heel. These are like the lug nuts on your Absolutely. tire. So you really gotta secure them and batten down the hatches, so to speak. So I usually say, make it about 80% as tight as you want it to begin with. Do a good five to 10 minute warm up. By the time you've done your warm up, then you're ready to make the shoelace even snugger and get it close to that 100% you know, strength. The other thing about a shoe, if you run every day, the shoe needs 36 hours to re-aerate. There is air in the actual fibers here. So when you run, you actually will force out those and air molecules. You're actually compressing the heel or right. the material, which forces out the air molecules, and it needs time to regenerate or right. refill its air pockets. Correct? Right. And so if you do run every day, a lot of times we suggest you get two pairs of shoes, and then you just alternate. Them. Would you recommend identical pairs? Right. Okay. I would stay with the same shoe, especially if you're running, you know, the same amount, and, and that's your uh, okay. You know, norm. Okay. So here's an X-ray of. A, a patient's legs. This is how we measure this leg length difference in millimeters. So we initially take a picture in the ankle bones, then we take a picture in the knee bones, and then we take a third picture in the hip bones. We don't need to see the entire bone, we just need to see the bottom and the top of each bone. So after 4,000 of these x-rays have been done, the average is five to six millimeters. So most people have about a quarter inch difference in their legs in this actual longitudinal difference. That does translate into more leg length difference, more weight being distributed on the long leg, and even more mass where it'll actually weigh more. And that's why many times the long leg hamstring or the glute or the back continues to get tighter than the other leg or the other side of the body does. What I see as being a high priority in my practice is trying to create this kind of uh, symmetry in the body, where the shoulders are level, the hips are level. And this is where in my 30 years of practicing, I have been able to deduce that making this pelvis level is gonna be predicated upon the leg length, the one femur bone, the one tibia bone on each side, how these have to be the same length. And also we need to get the foot to line up properly underneath the leg so that over in this picture we can see the foot driving the forces again vertically. The actual architecture of the uh, body is that these muscles have very specific 30, 60, 90 degree triangles in the way that they're formed, especially these right through the scapula. But all the muscles through the body have this very unique geometry and need to be symmetrical. Here are the glutes 
on uh, the left side and then we've got the hamstrings coming down here but trying to get the body symmetrical with one side working as equally as the other side even in the calves is again going to start from the bottom up and why this priority of getting the structural alignment of the body prioritized then we can see that the muscular function is going to be more predictably symmetrical as well. Now I noticed that uh, you know you do a lot with sports athletes, but I know that all your clients aren't athletes. In fact, one of your neighbors is quite big in the music industry. What's, what are their names? Uh, Ring Mena and Chantal Kreviazzi are turning out to be great friends and neighbors and they have very active lives traveling all over this planet. So you keep them tuned up so they can perform at the highest level as well? It absolutely can go across the board whether you're a jumping uh, 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 guitar player or you're a jumping uh, track athlete. Well, great. The demands on the body are still there and the need to offset those demands are, are there as well. Wonderful. So do you think we could go over and visit them? Let's see if they're home. Great. Let's go over and see them. They're right next door. <laughs> well, we're here with Rain Maida and we are really fortunate to be here in your, actually your recording studio. Yeah, at my house. Yeah, this is this where the magic thing. happens over here? Uh, some of it, before you take it onto the stage, definitely. Right on, yeah. right on. And then, can you tell us a little background on, you know, what you do? Uh, I'm, you know, originally, uh, my band uh, from Toronto originally signed to Columbia Records and the band's called I Lady Peace. We've made uh, eight records now, seven records, and um, over the course of the last ten years, my wife and I have started songwriting and, and producing for outside artists. So we do a lot of that here. We're still artists ourselves, but we get to kind of wear both hats, which is nice. Right, and then what yeah. brought you to Dr. Paul? You know what? It's fate. Um, funny enough, when my band first started, we um, we had uh, a call from, from our, our manager. We were in Boston playing this little club called the Middle East, and we got a call from our manager saying the first page in the plant reunion was happening, and Robert Plant had heard a song uh, my band had called Starcy when he was driving around in his limo in New York. And so called up our manager right away and said, I want this band opening up for us. So we had to leave Boston and, and drive to Chicago to start this page and plant tour. Along the way, my back went out, and I'd ha I've been having you know, starting to have back problems. I was doing martial arts when I was younger, and and so I'd have these episodes, and I had one of these episodes before the first show in Chicago, opening for for Plant and Page, where my back just seized up, and and the nerves were just it was like a knife in my back. So, you know, I probably honestly I'd seen 11 different doctors, and half said have the operation, half said said not to. So I was you know I was kind of in the disarray, I didn't know what to do, and I and I would wake up in the morning, you know, I got three really young kids, and you want to play with them, and. But I, I feel like an old man, like I'd get out of bed and it would take me a while just to, to get straight and brushing my teeth was a chore and, and I'm really active so sports I had to be really careful but you know I can honestly say it's been almost six years now since I got the orthotic. I wear them every day, I have three different pairs and I do everything I want, I have no pain, I haven't had an episode since I put the orthotics in and I was having episodes every, you know, when I wasn't on the steroids, you know, once every six weeks or three months. And, I, you know, I, I, and I, I don't like to hype things, I'm not that guy, but these things, what Dr. Paul does is the real deal and it's, it's saved my life. That's amazing. Well, even, you know, yeah. when we tour and playing guitar and having guitar strapped, there's a, there's an extra amount of pressure that's put on your back and, and I, I just don't even think about it anymore, it's pretty amazing. My wife will tell you, she has orthotics as well and um, she, the only reason she was able to have a thir our third son was because of the orthotics. You know, she just she was in a lot of pain as pregnancy does, but she had no pain and carrying around a baby once she got them was like it was nothing. So it just helps in every facet of your life. And and the thing about it that's crazy is it just the physics of it is so simple. If your body's in alignment, there's no pressure on your your joints or your back or your knees, and you're able to to live healthy. And it, it makes so much sense, but. Um, it took someone like Dr. Paul to kind of uh, create these unique orthotics. Well, we're thankful that you're doing it. I mean, uh, all of us are. You're doing great work. We really appreciate it. Rain, thanks for having us. Yeah, home. my pleasure. Really appreciate Thank it. you. Dr. Paul, always a pleasure. Thank you. And thank Patrick. you. And until next time, just remember to enjoy. So originally coming to you, I was experiencing the most pain I had ever felt and I was totally at um, the end of my wits with this pain and I 
didn't know what to do. I've tried many different remedies. And, but I have since have had your orthotics. I've never had a cortisone shot and I've never since had pain. And I've been able to run now 90 plus miles a week just being able to run with these orthotics. And I've, I know for a fact, it's just from these orthotics I've been able to continue running through college and now running with um, other great coaches. Thank you for having us. You're an amazing guy and we really appreciate your time. Well, Thank I appreciate you, so you guys and I look forward to doing more with you. And until next time, just remember to enjoy.